Okay guys, this is uh, March 25th of uh, 2018 and I got curious about that shed that I videoed there. That's been about two weeks ago now. I uh, wanted to come back and I found it again. It was moved, it's the same tree, but moved out a little bit. Yeah, it looks like they may have worked on it a little bit more. It's like some fresher cuttings up in here and they may have take a little more up that base yeah. all right I'll put that back down there where it was at and I also wanted to do this kind of if you read the uh, description on my last video update and um, kind of edit what I was saying about the uh, the blue tongue and the EHD in the last video about what causes it and what it does and what I had repeated is what had basically been told me um, I don't know it's been it'll be 10 years this year or we had our first outbreak of uh, the EHD or blue tongue here on our property. And, you know, for that amount of time, I never really thought about how ridiculous sounding that that was until I'd already uploaded that video and watched it. And, you know, just something about those larvae boring into the tongue I, I don't know why until then it had made sense but for some reason when I heard myself repeating that it really just kind of sounded a little far-fetched so as I probably should have done instead of taking everything you hear for granted I uh, got on the Google and researched it a little bit and I was about half right with all that you know the uh, the midge does um, lay its eggs and everything in the mud and then it's when you have kind of a drought year that it happens but it's actually the midge bites the uh, the tongue of the deer like if they lap up they bite it if and if the midge is infected with that EHD or blue tongue virus and also apparently there are two different things that are completely similar but are very similar but different it's just like two different diseases but basically in a roundabout way have the same effects um, that infection then goes into the deer and it's not transferable to any other animal it's just when the midge bites that deer or whatever animal it is that it bites is that it becomes infected and it's a uh, it's a virus and it causes swelling and it's not always terminal, um, which if the deer survives from it, it's actually a good thing because then it gets an immunity to it. And, but a lot of the times they get sick, the, the tongue and the throat and the face swells up. I've actually seen that firsthand. It's pretty brutal looking. Uh, last summer I saw a few deer, I have them, you know, this is basically my backyard and they had come in you know close to the house or i'm out here walking around and stuff you know i'd seen them and their faces swelling up and you know but anyway uh, the reason they go to the water is because they get a they get a really high fever and try to drink but like it you know like i said in the other video the tongue and the throat and everything is swollen so they're not actually able to drink the water and take the water in so they um, you know essentially you know succumb to the disease and well not all of them from what I read but the majority of them succumb to it you know the uh, the fever and the infection and it just kills them um, so there's that I wanted to touch on that um, 
correct myself for my mistakes in that last video. Uh, that plane going over him was pretty close. But yeah, that is basically just wanted to uh, touch back on that and not take what I had taken for the truth, you know. Uh, so always do your research before you make videos and put them on YouTube. Um, so just want to correct myself there, guys. And just want to say thanks for watching. And see you guys later.